Kaidila Mapam, Naro de Mokompo, Nemwa Gisogon. Eduardo Nguabidona and Degayen and Adoa. My name is uh, Samuel Nangiria, and I'm the lead uh, person in this delegation of the Masai visiting uh, museums in UK. Kadi Juliana, Naramala Mashati, Nengua, Kenya, Narok. Arigilwagi. Romono or Masai, the yellow room uh, I represent in Romono or Masai, we will not do the Masa uh, Natia Nakup and or Masai. My name is Evelyn Kanei. I am from uh, southern Tanzania, from the uh, Irparaguyo Masai section. I am here to first of all represent my community that is um, located far away from um, other Maasai because most of the Maasai are in northern Tanzania and are in Kenya, but we are way south. My name is Yannick Ndoinyo. I am from Tanzania. And this is my second visit in the UK to explore cultural Maasai objects in UK museums. I am from Tanzania. Now, what about you? Now, my My name is uh, Amos Leuka. I came from Kenya. I was chosen by the traditional leaders. I'm Laura van Bruckhoven. I'm the director of the Pitt Rivers Museum, which is one of the four museums of the University of Oxford. We've been visiting UK museums for a way to find a mutual ground between the Maasai communities and to find the ways of redress uh, in a way that to bridge the gap between uh, what the museums don't know and what the Maasai know and they feel that it is not being addressed by UK museums and by holding their traditional and cultural artifacts. So the dress is finding a common and mutual ground between uh, these museums and the communities of the Maasai. Ore siya yondo munokta na siya ni geiro na ore ndo chingu mukta ni weji na ndo munoke roruoki ore nguliye roki na ore na na Maasai mwe na reba na ndo munok na reba. It is actually very important that uh, women are represented in uh, this project because. In the Maasai culture, uh, or even most African countries, the women are really the custodian of the culture. They give birth, they teach the children um, things about life. It is a male-dominated society, so it is important that the women voices are heard. The Pitt Rivers Museum has collections from peoples from all across the globe. And one of the things that Pitt Rivers Museum has put central and core to its um, strategy and its vision and, and the reason why we are here really is to actually um, reach out and engage with all the people um, who, of who we have collections that we feel have a very strong um, connection to those collections. If you want to bless your household, you want to bless your cows, uh, with the help of or the guidance of a spiritual leader, you have to lit a fire, and this is how you make the fire. Mm -hmm. So to purify your home, to purify the cows, and to purify um, the family as well, uh, you have to make a fire uh, using this. And how, this, this and how would it work? How how would you use it to make it? How, how does it make fire? Ah, okay. So you 
uh, for an IG group, beginning of an IG group, it is the mentors of that group who will make fire. Right. So, for example, uh, James and myself are now mentoring a group. Uh -huh. So, if a boy is circumcised, which shows that he's graduating from um, being a boy to a, to, a, to a man, a warrior, we go, mm -hmm. we make fire ourselves. Right. And then we rub the two sticks together. And you do that with, with your hands or with, the, or with the bow? <laughs> no, no, with your hands. hands. Right, okay. With our hands. Wow. We rub okay. them together until yep. there's fire. Right. And we use that very fine cyber uh, back, dry, with the, the, uh, the, the leaves. So that when the fire is made, uh, and we have to burn that, the leaves of that tree uh, in a way, uh, and, and the smoke mm -hmm. uh, gives life or gives meaning that it is now the beginning. I was once at uh, a museum in, um, in New York and Washington, D.C. And in those museums, I saw a lot of artifacts from Egypt. And then I was just wondering, why don't they give them back? So a few years <laughs> after that incident, it is happening to me to learn that a lot of the artifacts from my own community is in the museums in the UK. We have also been able to understand that there are a big knowledge gap in terms of narratives. Completely, in some cases, you find an object, it has no narratives connected to it, only the dates collected and maybe the place it was collected. Nothing like local names, nothing like significances culturally. So this makes it more uh, important for us to engage as indigenous community directly to make sure that we are represented properly in the museum. This shows uh, to have been collected Since 1960. 1960 and got to the museum 1996. And Isrutia is a very significant uh, artifact worn by senior women and also one in very important ceremonies. And this is also uh, something that um, connect the, the, the daughters and the mothers. So uh, from what the spiritual leader said, um, uh, the owner who was a mother was killed and she was carrying a baby. Yes, seeing those artifacts, looking at them, touching at them, it makes you sad, but at the end of the day, there is hope because um, the museum staff have had, uh, have really opened their doors and they kind of acknowledged that these things will not sit in the, U in the UK museums forever. So I hope that Sooner or later, we will get those things out of the UK museums and our societies, our nations will move on despite what has happened during the colonial times and other times. Uh, we've been able to find two types of artifacts. One is the general um, artifacts. And another one is uh, culturally sensitive uh, objects, objects related to uh, marriage, uh, inheritance, uh, and, and objects that are related with uh, big ceremonies in Maasai community that you can never lend, you can never give, never sell. So this category has been more problematic in terms of how do we get to know how they came, uh, they ended up here in the UK. I was a mion sabo goling, or marry, la la tiai, lai wa an atum a a dollar jo, keri sininge masi ni ne wedi, na ayo losno udi na yole negra ima na yole ni kununu lo marry, na wo kwanza i wa rumo sinari lo tiai ruti ruti angali lo marry yamu kayo lo shida na ra na ra na ma yola ra na ino ito yaba na imo shida ni, ora si angai, na Another thing is that some of the people who are living in the world are living in the world. They are living in the world. They are 
neeri ningwari enkerai nebaiki nehomo sinye ina kerai ala aya shomo ala ikaja neeku natum si ai wasi anoto sina mion oleng entomononi natayiolo ajo ketara This is why we decided to bring a spiritual leader here to be able to help us with spiritual guidance connecting with ancestors to be able to establish exactly how they ended up here where where are they from whether they we can also be able to trace the status of families that they came from ore no sia na siai enkidong na eteru ake na pena siai etila ka kuya na kirosho oleng na ndoki amano oleng dar masai amuka dol ndoki ringa pa na arlo sweti na dol na risiadi na nya no hikia siai ka masai this at fact side in this petri vamisia and the cambridge and uh, the chief spiritual leader said the consolation has to happen with ancestors including maybe trying to reach out to the families if they are still around, if they are still living or if they are still there and uh, we would like to get a collective kind of a guide a guidance on what we do with this things maybe we take them back with us He's trying to establish the families first. <coughs> he can establish the families that it was taken from uh, for two of the objects, and then he will establish how it was taken. Um, so was it uh, robbed or uh, was stolen. it uh, stolen or was it uh, sold? And he's already seen that there was a lot of conflict yeah, involved yeah. with the uh, families, right? Yeah. That's it. Can I have anyone? Can you? Okay. 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 And uh, this is an important moment when it comes to this spiritual guidance because uh, the whole idea has been whether we leave things to continue lying in these museums, whether we reunite with the family, whether we perform anything to, to show that. Uh, these things are completely different from the rest of uh, collection in the museums. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's saying, okay, that is partly taken care of mm -hmm. in terms of uh, you should keep them mm -hmm. the way you've been doing it until he is able to yeah. give us uh, so the really guidance on what should happen okay. because he's trying to consult the families and also try to see the status of the families. Yeah. He says the final instruction on these specific items will be given after we've gone back and feed him back, talk to him and tell him about what we saw and also meeting physically his son. Okay. So until we are back is the time you'll be able to give the instruction. When the Lebon was tracing the object, we are able to discover that many of the objects were taken under duress. And it is really a lesson to me because I never knew that. But coming here, I have come to learn that. And I understand that Miss Ware, a lot of her history is hidden. We feel very empowered. 
but uh, the traditional institution has been able to detect or to, to locate, uh, to, to know the families. I was very surprised to find one of those artifacts is from uh, Moleli clan, which I am from. Uh, and uh, it, it gives us, it gives me, um, makes, makes that artifact very much alive. The artifact is here and it is, it is connected to me. What do I do? What do I do with this thing? It means uh, I cannot just go and, and bury, out, bury that uh, message or that, bury that revelation. Uh, we have to do something about it because uh, it is so sacred and it is here. And I have uh, that uh, obligation uh, to inform my fellow clanmen. Uh, the activity that I, will, I want to know more about the museum is about the education department in particular. What are they educating the kids? If the inf information in the museum are not properly interpreted. So uh, I have learned that what they are doing they are still giving the same wrong information about the Maasai. So I want to tell the museum that let our information be told correctly. And it's just really interesting to see how little meaning we are actually yeah. yes. able to transfer of any of this currently in our displays. It's yeah. just <coughs> almost appalling. Well, yeah. So this object would almost signify the end of yeah, the this, end of a period. This uh, signifies the end of a period. So when something's done, when this thing is given out, it's now you and that. So you, the community have washed their hands and now give you the blessing. Right. Yeah. That is in our Maasai concept. Mm -hmm. We normally say which family, these two families have done the wrong thing. We need to bring them together. This is how we can reconcile. This is the payment for all this. And the whole, we, the whole other community will be witness mm -hmm. that it has happened. Today we are finished. Whatever has happened in the past, we have forgiven each other. Uh, if you come here now, uh, you will not look this item twice. No. Mm -hmm. no. That's so small, then you move, then try to get then you move on. Yes. But if you move it's and if you, if you, uh, you come to this and you read the item with what we have been ex describing mm -hmm. and explaining, uh, anybody else from Oxford or from outside will, 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 will provide attention here. Yes. Then they say, uh, so this has bigger meaning. And uh, we, as a community from the Maasai, mm -hmm. we have been able to remove bad omen from families and help the families well. grow. Mm. Yeah, because, yeah, because we, without, without that story, mm -hmm. it's just... A metal. It's, it's, like it's a metal, it's yeah. yeah. With the story, yeah. it then connects to humanity. Yeah. Yeah. This is what yeah. we, we wish the museums can do. Connect all this. This help all of them from Asia, Africa, yeah. 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 from yeah. Europe. I feel a pity for you because there are so many. A lot of I don't know, many years. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how when, when. It will be many years before yeah. you finish this. <laughs> so what we would do as museums is try to piece together the history of specific objects or specific parts of collections by going to archives, so you've had to go to Birmingham, the National Archives in London, uh, where else, the Bodleian yeah, yeah. Archives, so many different archives to actually see is there anything written from these people or about these people that we can put together and sort of um, get more insight into what was happening. So I've been trying to look at the historical context and trying to find out as much about these collectors and also what was happening at that time in, in, in colonial East Africa. What we notice is there's big gaps of information where actually they didn't find it important enough or the records were not kept, because often they would keep diaries, for example, which would have a lot more information. If we don't find a diary, we don't count the information. The final person is Phoebe Summers, who collected the Sarutia in 1960, so much later. Mm -hmm. And she is uh, a teacher first in Kenya and then in um, Kilimanjaro area in Tanzania. And in her letters, she's always writing letters home, there are three references to buying things. And she seems to be quite, uh, you know, she goes up and asks someone if she can buy something. So she went up to one of them and started taking photos. And 
Uh, one of the men had a very good rungu, so she wants to buy it. Mm. So she initiates the pur purchase. So there's another one here from uh, January 67, when she's going on a safari and she's at Kika Rock. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. And um, she said, we had some amusing interludes on the way there with the Maasai. I got out of the car on several occasions and talked them into bartering their snuff boxes and necklaces with me. They were rather surprised, but very pleasant. And I succeeded six times, having got three of each. So three necklaces and three snuff boxes in that particular incident. If these two systems are going to, uh, to give us like a clearer picture, then um, we might uh, see the potentiality of using traditional, uh, I mean the, the spiritual system in trying to help us in defining kind of a partnership that we would like mm. to see in the future. Yeah. So this is what to say that I think mm. for us at the Masai community, 100% we trust the, the spiritual system. Yeah. Yes. And I think what we're trying to do now is to bring together knowledge systems, integral mm. knowledge systems. So there's a knowledge system which is based on traditional knowledge, mm. on the traditional system of leadership and the spiritual leadership that we're bringing into which is a very innovative part of this project, actually, where we're looking at how can we together sort of look at finding uh, coherences, are they overlapping, are they contradicting themselves, are they actually um, bringing in new piece, bits and pieces of information. And to me, it's been really interesting to see how actually they've really been sort of, they seem to be quite similar, similar cool. in presenting a coherent <coughs> picture of Lots of um, people having to flee difficult situations where people were needing to um, be fighting each other. Obviously, all of that within the bigger colonial framework. And for all this time, uh, the Maasai community has relied on spiritual uh, capacity, spiritual mm -hmm. power. Now they've been they have been accurate 100 percent on mm -hmm. issues, on weather on uh, uh, even conflicts and so mm -hmm. uh, as you say this is an innovative part of this process mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, I think it is an opportunity to see the, the relationship between the two systems mm -hmm. and this will give us more legitimacy more relevancy in engaging more tightly with this process. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting where we were all sitting around the table and looking at, you know, sort of comparing notes almost, or sort of having, you know, looking at, okay, this object seems to have been taken so many hands, this time period more or less, what do we know about the collector, where did she or he go? Um, and it just really, really was so, so remarkable how many aspects were very, very compatible with each other and actually sort of filling in different gaps. There was a really strong um, statement from Le Maron where he said, you don't have to doubt what the gourd says, what the ancestors say is the truth. They have no sort of extra other agenda in this. And I think that's where um, that was really important, a very important statement, I think, to hear. Uh, it also reflects how, how much trust there is in that knowledge um, system and, and, and in the spiritual leader. So th that was really quite um, an important moment, I think. We are coming from Oxford now, traveling to Cambridge, in a museum there, in the university. We are going to do an analysis and a survey of other Maasai artifacts in the university there. This is my first time in Cambridge and I'm hoping to see as many as possible Maasai artifacts. I am not hoping to find some of the sacred objects because it is going to be another shock. The sacred objects, especially those that can be only uh, inherited by a uh, a father to a son should remain or should be only be found in Maasai families and if they are here it means those, those families are no longer complete 
or purify, so to speak. And can I just say it is an incredible honor and a privilege for us to welcome you here. Um, we've not had the privilege of welcoming Maasai people before, so this is a, a first for us. It is a historic moment and we are really grateful to you um, for taking the time um, to come and look at material that belongs to your communities, belongs to your history and help us start a journey to understand that collections, those heritage uh, better. So I have to um, say that I am sorry that we have not had the chance so far to bring you, engage in a dialogue with you and get these stories right. So the, the, the British or the, maybe the, the, the England population, me, you people who are here now are innocent, we are also innocent. We need to use the object to connect us and, and start feeling about humanity. One question is um, to the museum and maybe to uh, how do you feel having all these things for the last hundred years and so and, and you didn't like bother to, to seek for maybe information or maybe engaging the communities of origin? It's unfortunate that that, that has not um, taken place. <coughs> It's not just a stanaf box. Mm. I think something is more than that, mm. symbolically and also the way we use it. And uh, it is uh, something that is marking some important rite of passage. Like it's only like an elder. We have ceremonies um, marking points where a, a man or a human being in Maasai community has to go through. Uh, you must get to some ages and have gone through a complete course of Maasai trainings to be able to to be given at this. So this is only not only a snuff box, mm. but more of a, something that marks the beginning of a life where somebody is regarded an elder. I hope there are some other narratives behind or other history. Is this the only thing you have about this particular? Do you have any other information regarded to regarding this? Um, you don't. So this is the only thing you have? Very, very little. That, uh, so I can read you the entire record. Okay. The, um, okay. So this is the handwritten record with which it was uh, when it came in. A pair of buffalo horn snuff boxes, urn shaped, decorated with colored beads, with hide caps sliding on iron chain slings. So it's very much a physical description. Yeah, physical. You know, it's what you're looking at. So uh, the relationship that builds from uh, this fire stick, which is actually, this is called Ripiron in Ma, and this is called Endole. In terms of significances and symbolism, this is actually uh, one of the most important. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the most important um, center and also the, the umbilical that connects the people throughout the life and it doesn't expire. So to me this is, I have to say that I was surprised when I saw it in the email but actually it just makes so much sense and, and makes, makes the point of why conversations like this are so important. You know something that looks so, <laughs> that to our eyes just looks so, I'll say insignificant, when you know anything about it suddenly becomes the most important thing on the table and so that, that that's yeah. Thank you for that, if nothing else. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, there should be a relationship between the item, not just, not just the collector, yeah. but where, to whom it was collected from. Absolutely. Because then they will know um, um, their culture, the way of life mm. is helping, uh, informing and changing and uh, interacting. Mm. Right now, 
there is not much interaction between this product or this item and the Maasai from whom they were collected. No, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, but I can also say that for this kind of artifact, there probably hasn't been any interaction with anyone for a very, very long time because it's been in the museum store for so long, you know, that, that it hasn't been on display. Quite very interesting that they don't expire. We, we can make fire now from this. Just, just less than a minute and fire comes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, and here, the entire documentation attached to the object is that. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but. <laughs> We have we have seen as um, an artifact like this one in uh, in Peter Rivers Museum. Uh, <coughs> this is called our Qatar. And uh, unfortunately, the Lebon yesterday was able to identify one or Qatar as belonging to my clan, which is very shocking. Mm -hmm. It's really shocking because uh, uh, <coughs> When the pa when the father passes away, one item to give to the to the son. We have this uh, spiritual institution, and they have never been to Europe to any other part of apart from the Maasai land in Tanzania and Kenya. But one of the complex uh, environment that we had to bring him is because of Akatar. So and. It's very shocking that I wish you know how we feel and, and the way we are trying to, to, to manage our emotions when you see such things. When I see the six El Qatari in, at the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology in Cambridge, it really caught my, as per, uh, my moment and that is what I remember most because I was not expecting to see this thing. It's like I'm seeing six dead bodies. When we, I saw the, 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 the objects in Peter River Museum for the first time, I told them, despite the fact that they're here for the last 200 years, they are breathing in the shelves. You think the communities are dead, cultures are dead, but the knowledge that used to make, to develop the objects, is living. So for us, this, this journey is lifelong. This journey is meaning a lot not only for the indigenous communities all over the world, but also for the entire planet. When we were explaining yesterday, we, you see the object, but we see much more. And I would say uh, those um, the traditions and the cultures that um, indigenous communities all over the world uh, hold up to strongly is because they have a lot of meaning to their survival and their livelihoods. And it is time, I think, for the museums like this and the Pit Rivers and the, and the rest 
to reach out to these communities, actually to learn a lot more. Because uh, the orchidom we saw yesterday, or uh, the snuff box, and the fire package, fire, fire making package, means a lot. It maintained relationships, discipline between generations, and uh, this is what is keeping those communities a community as they are now. Uh, they also have a lot of meaning on how they manage resources, how they manage land, and how they, their lands probably have remained uh, as natural as they are today. And so all these cultures and these traditions, uh, in a way, are ensuring sustainability of people and uh, lands and the resources. And I think um, you should reach out to, to, to these communities to, to learn more and strengthen those um, cultures because they, they, they ensure a lot. Uh, um, I have to you know, apologize personally and on behalf of the um, institution that it has sort of taken us so long to understand um, that history and um, try to um, uh, engage with you and put together a, a better understanding. When we were meeting our chief spiritual leader, he said, we know that the people, the museums, are not the people who brought the artifacts into the museums. The shame would be if they renounce to collaborate. This will be the shame, and it will put more dark. It will put more darkness in, the, in, in this process. But if they open up their hearts, they open up their minds, because this is a learning process. We are all learning. We are here on a mission and a peaceful mission. Uh, as we have advised by our spiritual leader when we are leaving home, one of the things he stressed that is peace. We have been struggling with the current waves or the way the legacies left by colonial and the scars and the wounds But this is our time. It's going to be our century to start retrieving. Because we have not gone far with struggling with land rights, cultural security, our governments all over the world couldn't make sense out of the way we live. They have inherited <coughs> colonial legacies. They have inherited colonial marginalization, inherited colonial discrimination. So this journey is not a journey of seeing the objects. It's a very holistic process. That has a meaning beyond the Maasai people that is going to contribute to saving the planet. We are coming to London uh, to visit the BBC um, radio and television. It is important that we tell the world and explain correctly what we are doing. And using radio and television is a great opportunity. And the BBC is a wide-reaching media organization. It goes all over to our villages, our country, and everybody listens to BBC. So it is a great opportunity for us. This is uh, our friend Zura <laughs> Lemus uh, from BBC. Um, she's a kind of a key person presenter with the, with the Swahili World Service. And I'm sure she's very interested with the story anyway. We are Maasai uh, community, is, is our spiritual leader. 
and we are very very grateful we are very honored to be here to share and participate in this very important event and our speech leader is going to put the offering olive oil branches and some herbs from our land in Tanzania and Kenya as part of sharing the spirit of uh, wisdoms and our culture and the way we connect very closely with lands, water and everything that surrounds us. Mm. I am quite amazed at how much we've moved forward. There's still a lot of work ahead, but we really have made great strides, I think, in both finding the spiritual guidance, combining knowledge systems, and getting to know each other better. I am seeing a positive result, because the museum have already committed that they are ready for partnership, and the leadership of the Maasai have said previously that they are also ready for partnership as long as they respect our aspiration and our existence as a community, as a people. And they will not see uh, maybe one is superior than the other. If you really truly want to do decolonial science and decolonial academia, it means that you are taking each other's knowledge systems seriously. I will also uh, respect the partnership when it is treat the object of sacred importance with the respect they deserve. And we're also very grateful that there has been so much input from the whole of the community through the feedback sessions that were held. So the whole Maasai community, having been consulted, having been able to speak, also expressed their concerns. So when we go back, we will hold meetings to present them with what we have found here. We will gather all traditional leaders with our senior spiritual leaders, our leader Mokombo, to, pro to provide and present uh, the feedback of, of what we've been doing in the UK for the last two weeks. I would really like to express my thanks and my gratitude to um, Mokombo, Laibon Mokombo, uh, for trusting us as an institution and me personally also as a person to bring this process further because this is actually what has been such an important component this without without the spiritual guidance that we've been given this would have been impossible i have been involved very closely with the process of trying to, uh, to understand to know to identify our cultural artifacts we would like the museum to know that you are not holding the artifacts you are holding the communities. You are holding a very horrible history that our people have gone through. You are holding a secret of exactly what happened. And you are holding the keys to be able to enable the communities and people, individuals and communities to understand. And from that understanding, we will be able to get a new direction, retrieving the history and setting the right history, setting the right information. Because it's only then that we can think about radical change. Unless we learn, unless we understand, unless the museum is ready to compromise some of its establishing principle to be a place of people, to be, not to be a place of artifacts, like to be a home of people, to understand the people, to understand the feeling, to understand the emotion, to understand part of history, what we've gone through as a people. So um, if we need to get a radical change, it's actually the museum has to decolonize its practices. The museum 
has to be not for science alone, but for humanity. We've been feeling emotional. We've been going through radical kind of vibration in our hearts when we see this object. This object, you see objects, we see our parents, we see our ancestors. It's an opportunity that we can retrieve the history. And history will help us confront the current struggles. And I look forward to see more of side of engagement with other indigenous people all over the world. Because the healing is not for the mass island. It's the healing of the whole planet. Because the planet is re reacting. We see the planet is sh shaking. Everybody is worried about the future, climate change. But it's the result of irresponsible kind of life we have lived. We have detached ourselves from nature. We have detached ourselves from cultures that have permanent um, relationship with nature. And we have been dwelling with science, investment, money, you know, and all this. And I think everyone is now a witness that it's time to reflect. And indigenous people will lead the world in that direction of reflection. Thank you. Ay 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 